Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll call this a Planning and Community Affairs Committee to order and ask you to rise for a moment of silence. Thank you, please be seated. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest in the nature thereof? Councillor McDougall? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, as previously declared on both, um, sorry, 11.2 for Willow Tree and as well 11.1. And the nature? Uh, clients. Your clients, okay. Thank you. Okay. Any others? Okay. Um, any announcements from council and staff? I actually, I have a few to um, to start out with. Um, I want to thank MPP um, Lindsay Park for holding a roundtable discussion. Um, Scugog was well represented. The discussion was on transit. And uh, many of, most of council was there, and I thank you all for coming, and uh, there were some residents there as well. Um, that was well represented, and uh, the nature of it was about transit, and basically about the 81 and the 81A being canceled, 81 being reduced, and the 81A being canceled um, with, um, with Metrolinx, uh, the GO bus. And uh, it appeared that everyone was listening, and uh, that's, that was good news, so. Thank you to uh, MPP Park and uh, MPP Lauren Cole and MPP Bethlen. Beth <laughs> I can't pronounce that. Bethlen. Bethlen Falby. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, and there were representatives from Metrolinx uh, there as well. And uh, that morning, Friday morning, there was uh, an announcement um, over on the island, on the uh, lands of the uh, Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, um, about the uh, start of the construction for natural gas for the island. Uh, the big news today that uh, the air, the digest, what do they call it, the air, anaerobic digestion, um, uh, that was, um, we were on the short list for. Um, is going to Clarington, or that is the preferred site at this point in time, and we are well down the list, so that is uh, good news. And um, just wanted to announce too that um, our township is um, starting a, a project, um, gathering feminine, um, pro uh, feminine projects, or feminine products. Uh, for Operation Scugog, and just a reminder that um, the, uh, Easter is coming up and the shelves are getting bare, and uh, we want to thank all those wonderful volunteers with Operation Scugog by filling their, filling, filling their shelves. So thank you very much, and if there are any other uh, announcements, please. No other announcements? Oh, Councillor McDougall. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just an announcement for everybody, both um, I'm not sure exactly all the locations, but I know that both Willow Tree Farms and Purple Woods are having maple syrup festivals this spring, March 13th through to uh, April 5th, and I think there might be some others around in the area as well. So get out there while it's spring and enjoy the nice long days and, and get some maple syrup and pancakes in you. Thanks. So. Sounds good. Sounds delicious. Any other announcements from Council? See none. Announcements from staff. Thank you. This afternoon we passed our budget. And uh, I see that Director Valentin is not here tonight. She's having a well-deserved rest uh, after being uh, full, full out, uh, working on budget along with staff. So uh, we passed the passed the budget this afternoon, and so now staff can work on work plans for this year. And uh, it's all very exciting. Um, increased services and uh, roads, roads, roads. It's uh, wonderful news. Nothing further. Okay, uh, can I have, there's no minutes, uh, no public meetings. Presentations, I'll call on uh, Marion Myers. 
um, who is presenting for Scugog Council for the Arts. Welcome, Marion. You have five minutes. You've got some exciting news for us. Is your mic on? Oh. Red dot. Scugog Arts Festival, May 1st to 10th, uh, 2020, Small Town Big. What's happening? A small Town what? Well, okay, what it is is a multi-arts festival across Scugog. And the whole concept was to build on existing local art scenes. So, for example, Lake Scugog Studio Tour that's been over 20 years uh, build on something like that and build it out into a 10-day festival. What we wanted to do was make it multi-arts and we wanted to provide some new unique programming that would attract another thousand to fifteen hundred new visitors to the area. Um, the emphasis, there would also be an emphasis on indigenous culture in Scugog and the, it has the potential to become an annual festival, so this is our first um, step at it. And what we're looking to do is, pr is prove that Scugog can combine our lovely small town charm with a big experience. So we're going to hit all areas of um, the arts. Visual arts experience include like Scugog Studio Tour and of course um, Kent Farndale Gallery with their show that they have on that month. Then uh, uh, two of the artists from Lake Scugog Studio Tour will be at Scugog Arts Gallery. And then we're adding another layer. The artists of the community are getting together again to create some um, public art. And they're putting together, creating um, uh, Muskoka chairs that will be painted, tiled, maybe covered in macrame. We don't know. and. Um, so that's the visual art uh, scene. The music scene starts with a big kickoff at Old Flame with the Wanted and a food truck. It builds on their Friday night food truck. Uh, Lynn McDonald is presenting Pippo Romero. Uh, it's a twist on what she normally does. This isn't jazz, this is uh, flamenco. As it turned out, Town Hall Theater, the Wilkinsons booked themselves into Town Hall Theater, which was really exciting. They're a great Durham region um, trio. And the whole concept of this, it gets exemplified in some of these things. People like Lynn McDonald will present something as she normally would or give it a twist. She does her own marketing. She makes her own money the way she normally does it. But overarching this is our marketing program. The Wilkinsons are doing all their own marketing and their own ticketing and they book Town Hall Theatre. And then we're creating some of our own events and that is the kickoff with the music. We're providing the music, Scugog Arts is providing the music to Old Flame. Theatre on the Ridge has got a full um, slate of interesting things. Uh, bringing back Monsters and Milfoil, the children's play about the lake where we've got them booked um, to give, uh, and, and they've got sponsorship to do free um, theater performances. They've got a fabulous comedy, uh, Stag and Doe, that's going to take place in Prince Albert Hall. And then they're holding a theater tea and treats costume show and high tea at Utica Hall at the end of the 10 days. So this also shows you that we're trying to get into every venue that we can in the township um, and have reached out to all of them. And some of them are really excited to work with us and others were just paying the rent. Writing out loud, we're gonna do some very cool things there. Uh, poetry slam and blind date with a book upstairs at Jester's. Um, Agatha Christie and Archaeology, a talk by um, Dr. Amy Barron in the Rotary Room. And Ink Slingers are doing writing sanctuaries. So in Indigenous culture, our main big thing that we're doing is an in conversation with Drew Hayden Taylor. Drew Hayden Taylor is an award-winning top indigenous writer from Curve Lake. Fabulous, uh, one of his big plays was Cottagers and Indians. And he's going to do an in-conversation with John Colwell of the Mississaugas at Town Hall Theater. Should be a very interesting night. We've got Port Cheese Company coming out to do samples. Um, then on Friday, May the 8th, um, the 
um, Mississaugas are putting on quite a range of different things out at the Health and Resource Center. You can start um, midday with an opening ceremony with drumming and dancing. You can participate and learn um, and in drumming and dancing. Um, there's a medicine bag workshop, and there will also be um, indigenous food sampling and making of food. And then extra, extra, a couple of things. So the Skugog Home and Garden Show is on, and we're making them part of the festival. They're doing their thing, but we're also advertising it. And they're very kindly going to show off all of our new um, art you can sit on chairs. And then the Lishman family has stepped up again and is doing underground house tours on the Saturday and Sunday of the last weekend. And so they will be uh, charging a fee, and therefore that's a fundraiser for their um, the Bill Lishman Memorial Project. So then marketing-wise, we're doing things like uh, uh, extensive listings on our website, posters, um, you can see that the poster has a bit of an artsy feel to it. Our idea is that in coming years, we'll have individual people uh, design that, and it'll be different every year so that we have a fun thing. Marianne, and we'll go your time is just about up. Can you okay. You. And we will be doing um, a great deal of advertising before, uh, outside the 40 kilometer. The presenting partners include Mississaugas of Scugog Island, Scugog Arts, and Central Counties Tourism. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. That's uh, really exciting. And congratulations on uh, all this organization. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Do I have That's questions great. for the presentation? Councilor Kiesebrink. I just wanted to say it was really exciting to be at the awards presentation and the Mississauga yes. uh, gave yep. that. That was like a huge check <laughs> yes. to, uh, to support this and they really got behind the vision and um, it's wonderful to see your idea go from just an idea to now really a full-blown, mm -hmm. uh, detailed um, presentation. Now, the organized Skugog uh, Arts is a charity, right? Yes, we are. Yeah. So I was just checking with our um, with our clerk before our meeting tonight. Um, you mentioned in your ask that you were wanting um, resources or uh, cost wave for. Uh, for some things, could you just elaborate on what your ask is? Oh, that? we didn't. We didn't. We just signed a contract with Town Hall Theater. We we wanted Town Hall Theater to be like a co-presenter with us of the programming that Drew Hayden Taylor, but they kind of balked at it. So we we just built it into our budget and booked it. So for the festival itself, there's there's not because all of your events are being held in different facilities. There's not really any township type of park fees or other types of fees that you would be subject to anyways, right? No. Okay. So that maybe that part of the paperwork that we received isn't really applicable then today. Yes, sorry. No. Okay. Oh, great. Um, okay, just wanted to clarify Would love that. it if you wanted to cover the <laughs> town hall bill, but no, um, we, uh, we recognize that you might have um, some time that you're allowed there, but I think I understood you had maybe um, summer camps or something that might use the theater, so... We just booked it. Okay. And how would you, so aside from that um, and aside from us helping to participate, is there anything else that, that you need for um, for the event? or Come just out to, to the event. <laughs> Come out to the things. Buy, go, go in here, Drew Hayden Taylor, go to the concerts, get out to those, you know, galleries and join the studio tour and, and enjoy it. Well, congratulations. It's a wonderful cross-section of artists from many different arts uh, special specialties that you've brought to this. And uh, we congratulate you for all the work that's been put into it so far. Great. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Watton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And Marion, it sounds awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. It truly does. Um, the uh, Skugog Arts Tour, or the art tour portion yes. of it, studio tour. Yes. Is it, going to, is it still similar? I didn't quite catch... Um, like, will it be crafted the same as it has been traditionally? Yes, one at, over one weekend or however. Yes, uh, okay, so the I missed the, the date. The, so the, yes, March. It's always the first Saturday and Sunday of May, mm, yeah. um, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and it's 51 artists at 19 sites. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 
-hmm. And they have, so we have our budget, but they have their budget too. Those artists spend close to $10,000 every year attracting tourism and visitors to the township. It's, it's a great thing for tourism, and, mm -hmm. and I hope, I wish you all the best on every success at every venue, because yeah. I think it's an amazing, um, um, amazing uh, layout and cross section. Great. Yeah, we tried to keep it not too big so that nothing, there's not much of two things happening at the same time. Anything further? Um, in your delegation request, um, you mentioned um, you're asking for waiving of fees. No. So you don't need that now? No. Okay. We, I'm a, a misunderstanding. Okay. That's that's wonderful. Um, and yes, I did uh, send a response. I will be at your opening. Oh, wonderful. And everybody's welcome to the opening. Yes, I so hope we'll all take advantage of some of these food's at events. five, music starts at six, and then we'll do the little, the spiels at seven or something like okay. that. Okay. <laughs> okay that's that's great. great. And you mentioned um, public art with the... Um, the chairs? Yes. How does that work? So the artists are donating their time. We have uh, purchased the chairs and the materials. We are um, doing what the hospital foundation did when the artists of the council did the ceiling tiles. They got sponsors for the ceiling tiles. That helped raise, um, I think that raised about five, $5,000 for the hospital foundation. Um, so we're going to do the same kind of thing. People can pay $200 to sponsor a chair. We'll put a little plaque on it. And uh, we will, uh, we'd like them to be on for public use and public display. Not that that means they're necessarily on public property. So for instance, um, they could be in the courtyard at Old Flame. They could be, but they could be on the patio at the library, places where people will come across them and take pictures. Okay, so uh, is there any thought about putting them in parks or anything? We would thinking? love them in the yeah. parks, and that would be a great um, long-term home for them, but we, we didn't want to sort of burden the project with that yet mm -hmm. you know we'll yeah, have well, places to put we'd them. We'd have to talk about about that because there's a, the security of them and I don't know what you're planning on doing for storage and so there's all those things and if you if yeah you, and if we want to go to that route you yeah contact staff and yes we'll talk about that yeah well thank you very much and okay um, all the best of luck for your event uh, thank this you is, this is great good thank you thanks motion to uh, receive the Delegation, Councillor Watt and Councillor Kiesebrink. Questions or comments, all those in favor, and that's carried, thank you very much. Next, um, Dan Barnes from Rural Wave. Is uh, Dan here or did he wave? Did he, did he say he was uh, not coming? Okay, he's not coming. Um, Mark Gibbons, welcome. Uh, you have a delegation on wintertime accessibility barriers, and you have five minutes. Perfect. Sorry, Councillor Watt. Uh, just backing up for a second. I noted that um, uh, with Mr. Barnes not coming, do we know if he's still asking for a letter of support? And if so, um, should that be um, okayed here at this meeting? Okay. I uh, think timing Director Coleman, might be. Does that need to be a resolution by council? Do you know or your comments uh, on? It? He is still asking for a letter of support. I don't believe that we need a resolution for that. Okay. We can provide that letter of support and, um, you know, we are anxious to have broadband in all of Scugog Township and if we do get any others, we will be happy to support them as well. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead, Mark. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, tonight's presentation is titled Scugog Sidewalks and it's a call to action to improve year-round accessibility in the township. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the challenges, but also focus on solutions, keeping in mind uh, our budgetary restraints. Um, a good sidewalk network and an accessible one drives uh, a lot of the strategic directions of the township, and it's supported by some verbiage in the official plan, such as um, you know complete and connected pedestrian realms, as well as um, continuous sidewalk networks. Uh, my name is Mark Gibbons. I am an uh, active transportation advocate here in Scugog as well as Durham Region at large. And uh, I, the premise here is that our children sh deserve uh, safe and active routes to school in our township. 
this is in part inspired from a motion that was resolved by um, the Community Services Committee in the City of Oshawa. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at it offline as it, it was very, very well crafted. Um, and I'll start by proposing to imagine requiring residents uh, to clear the snow and ice on the roads adjacent to their homes, as that's what we ask them to do with sidewalks. So I have a few points. Um, number one would be some recognition that sidewalks are municipally owned transportation infrastructure that are of equal importance to roads, and that inaccessible sidewalks disproportionately affect vulnerable user groups like children, seniors, and people living with disabilities. Uh, action item number two would be a review of snow removal priorities. Our sidewalk network as it exists faces additional strains in the winter time. And this scene is not uncommon where we'll see parking lots and roadways that are cleared while the municipally maintained sidewalk is, is sort of an afterthought. Um, driving in, in a couple of inches of snow is certainly possible while uh, walking or rolling in, in the same amount of snow could be practically impossible for some. So there is a disparity in service and it kind of raises the question, right? Why do we prioritize service for those who need it the least? So ideally, what would be, I'd be looking for is some sort of service guarantee that come school time, uh, parents and children have some degree of certainty that the sidewalks are going to be cleared um, using existing resources to, uh, to meet the demand. And we don't end up with situations like these where we have a big empty parking lot that's been, been cleared of snow and ice while children are walking to live lanes of traffic um, at the same time. So I argue that you know, the walk to school is of greater importance than removing snow and superfluous parking. Uh, action number three, action item, would be to um, you know, engage in some campaigns of public awareness of our, our snow removal bylaw, uh, which dictates you, know, you have to remove the snow within 24 hours, or else the municipality you know, can come along, plow it, and slap you with a bill. Uh, so the township did put out a couple Facebook uh, posts a couple of weeks ago in our big storm. Um, this is what Whitby's posting. Um, you know, I just kind of Googled some, some various campaigns from, uh, you know, North America. So both in social and in traditional media types. Action item number four with education follows enforcement. And uh, what I am sort of uh, suggesting is we move from a passive complaint based system to something a little bit more active with some sidewalk patrolling and monitoring. And that of course is supported by OREG. And uh, you know, there's some language here about patrolling sidewalks at intervals deemed necessary by the municipality. Um, and the whole point of this is, is avoiding situations like these where a private uh, uh, snow removal company has dumped an entire load onto the municipal sidewalk on Casimir Street a few years ago. And that you know, persisted three days later and then seven days later, and then a call to Director Coleman uh, certainly got that rectified. But the, the whole argument is that we shouldn't have to rely on citizen complaints to rectify this type of situation. Here's a recent example, uh, transit stop on Water, Water Street. Um, this is an interesting one for your consideration is the Snow Angel program. And for those of you who don't know or are familiar with the term, a snow angel is somebody who basically clears your, your driveway or your sidewalk. Um, some municipalities have formalized this as a kind of match.com between a set of volunteers and residents who basically are unable to remove snow from their sidewalks or driveways due to physical or economic limitations. So this is an example of the city of Vancouver, Windsor. Innisville is sort of a praise system, so like thank you for clearing my, my driveway and that sort of thing. And the cool thing about this is that you know, this could count towards volunteer hours for, for high school students. So maybe something that we could explore as a township. Pie in the sky, the asymptote is, of course, that government takes full responsibility for snow removal on sidewalks. And the whole premise of this is that, you know, freedom of movement is a fundamental human right. It's not just a privilege reserved to motorists. Um, and there's a question of liability based on court rulings. Uh, it's a ruling from the year 2000 that's cited quite often against the corporation, the city of Vaughan. And there's some pretty strong language in there that, that states that municipalities can't shift civil liabilities onto residents and that ultimately the legal responsibility of removal of snow and ice remains onto the, on, the, on the municipality. So if you know, a senior here has to slip and fall on the municipal sidewalk, then you know, the taxpayer at large is potentially on the hook for a, for a civil suit. Uh, cost benefit, won't go into it, but consistent service, lower healthcare costs, you know, loss of productivity from hospitalization, that sort of thing that we want to avoid. So finally, the ask, right? We passed the budget today. Uh, this is the amount that's allocated in the operating budget to sidewalk maintenance. So $35,000 is not a lot of money. 
And in the capital, we're talking less than 1%. So we would be looking for a, an increase of that in, in the five-year forecast moving forward. Um, you know, our sidewalks really do need some love. Uh, I realize some of these are slated for, for reconstruction. And I would also argue that, um, you know, I would like to see a priority of the, uh, um, a new sidewalk be built, or a sidewalk, sorry, be built to our community center so that uh, children and families don't have to walk to Camp Scugog in, in live lanes of traffic on Reed Street. So I hope that times that finishes my presentation. I timed it at five minutes. Good timing. There you go. I'm happy to take some questions. Good timing. Uh, you mentioned uh, parking lot. That that is for um, it's not for the tennis club. It's it's for the businesses all along Water Street. The the parking lot that you you suggested was not a priority. So uh, that was the Scugog Community Center and uh, rec, rec well, center, I, 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 the recreation. But uh, to that point, the the tennis club and the Latcham Center er, and the um, Palmer Park were also fully cleared yes, uh, prior, good thing for prior to, um, um, to school starting. And, and I mean, I was the only vehicle parked at the, uh, at the tennis club at that time. And Viridian was there replacing uh, the hydro damage from a vehicle that had crashed into it that yeah, morning. That's so. not a tennis club parking lot, but it is close to the tennis club. Um, are you referencing in particular the storm a week and a half ago? Uh, because uh, that was a snow day, and it was also a strike day for uh, the high school students. So priorities are always uh, roads first. Um, it's part of our economy to get people to work mm -hmm. um, in, in town and, and out of town. Um, it was a snow day. Um, it was a strike day. Um, it was not a high priority. We do have um, minimum maintenance standards for clearing of sidewalks. It's 48 hours, but mm -hmm. we're asking the... Uh, uh, residents to clear their sidewalks by 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Councilor Kiesbring. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was uh, both artful and uh, insightful. A lot of detail and a lot of thought went into to the whole thing. And it's good to see people um, coming up with creative solutions because there's a whole range of um, challenges uh, to uh, to be addressed. So. You covered quite a wide range of information right up to the snow angels, which was a very creative solution as well. I think one of the things that happened today earlier, and you were here for it, um, was we realized that with one of the contracts that we have for parks, um, which is 84,000, we can convert that to a, a position for eight, for 60 plus all the other stuff that goes along with that, which works out to 80, which in the long run will save $4,000, but then that person now becomes ours uh, to use year-round and not just a contract for, for plowing in the in the winter. And um, I think I'm getting the two positions mixed up, so I'm going to defer to Carol. But maybe you could elaborate on now we will have two people rather than just plowing. We'll now be able to address both plowing and, and sidewalks, which is really what this is all about today. And Carol, so, if you have yeah. any other comments, uh, Director Coleman, if yeah. you have any other comments, um, please all feel right. free. Um, yes, thank you through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. So we currently have three full-time employees in the Parks Department that are responsible for our parking lots and our sidewalks that the municipality maintains. Um, in a snow event, typically one person will start first thing in the morning, which is often 4 a.m. if it's snowed overnight and they start on sidewalks, two people go out to parking lots because the parking lots need to be done before the vehicles and people are in the parking lots. Um, there's a lot of safety concerns about when people are walking a parking lot and try to plowing it at the same time. And as while well, vulnerable users use our facilities and if they can't walk from their car to the, to the facility, then there's also like slips and falls, so we have to be careful of that as well. And then one person, keeps doing parking lots and the other one jumps in a sidewalk plow and joins the other person. So on a typical day, our sidewalks are all done in about eight hours after the snow stops, but every storm is different and it depends what happens. We have issues too with sidewalks that are right adjacent to a road and the sidewalk plow might clear it and then the, the road plow comes by and pushes the snow onto it so they have to go back. So it can often take us a day or even two days to get all our sidewalks clear after a major event like that. Um, so as you were mentioning with the new position, we won't have to decide to do, do we start the parking lot first or do we start the sidewalk first? 
So we will have two people that will get in pickup trucks and do parking lots, and we have two people that will get in our two sidewalk plows right away, and everyone, I think, will be addressed. And further through you, Madam Mayor, could you maybe tell us um, what we have uh, in our budget currently towards uh, sidewalk um, reconstruction? Because I know the sidewalks that we were supposed to do last year, the bids were too high. So we didn't want to throw that money away. So we, we would rather delay it and do double work this year. Could you tell us a bit about that? That, that is correct. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. That's correct. We had 100000 in sidewalk work last year that we postponed because the rates were very high. And so that contract has been awarded already and will start this spring. We have another 100000 in the budget for 2020, and that contract has been awarded, and it will start as well. And then we have 35000 in our operating budget, which was approved today. And that's for sidewalk maintenance, um, smaller projects like jacking sidewalks, grinding um, trip hazards, or replacing like single bays in different locations. So further through you, Madam Mayor, do not disagree at all with what you're saying. Obviously, there is we do have um, a lot of work to do, and uh, we, you know, we, we we join you in acknowledging those concerns, and and um, we'll continue to, uh, to to work on that. I had another thought, and it totally went out of my head. So I'm going to turn it back over to the mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Watt. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and. Um, I know that you frequent the sidewalks and transit and so on and so forth, but I do have a question. Um, if it is a really snowy day, and like, if you were driving, would you go out in that to go to work? And if so, which would be your priority? If you it, it really depends on the conditions, children, right? right. Um, like I said, driving in a couple of inches of snow is, is totally achievable, and that becomes very challenging if you're in a wheelchair. Um, and and the premise of this this presentation is is that the needs are higher for kids to get to school, so they're not walking out in the middle of the road like we see in these pictures, uh, rather than clearing an entire parking lot. Um, right. So I use the the rec center as an example. Uh, perhaps what could be considered is there's a minimal amount of plowing that could be done so that certain staff can open the building and whatnot, but perhaps delay the entire clearing of the facility, which is quite large, to a later point in the day, and focus on, on ensuring that's, that kids can walk safely to school by bell time. And even on snow days, that becomes even more important as the buses are canceled, so we have more children walking to school as the schools remain open, the schools are not closed on snow days. Um, it, it is critical that those paths are clean and old simple. You're a mean road. dad. That's a <laughs> you make your kids go to school when the school is closed. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm kidding. But thank you. Um, uh, if I may, uh, Madam Mayor, to um, the director, is there a way that we could um, prioritize um, the sidewalks that got cleared, i.e. the ones that would go to the schools before we did, I don't know, I don't know the network so much of what all the sidewalks we do, but is there a way to prioritize at least the ones that need to be done to open it up? I, I mean, I know they come, kids come from all over, but the direct paths to the schools, could they be cleared in a priority sequence? Just Through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, we do use a priority system. We start with the main roads, um, with usually the downtown first for businesses, get them open. We also do Queen Street and Old Simcoe are usually on the route. They start from the Parks Depot, which is down here, so it, it doesn't make sense to bypass sidewalks to get to other routes, so they kind of work their way out from there. And we do try to get the sidewalks clear as soon as we can. But if we look at that last storm, it was still snowing hard in the morning when kids were going to school. So there's no way we could have the sidewalks clear before school started on a day like that. So with our approval of, of the other, the full time, the position um, this, this afternoon, is it safe to um, presume that the eight hours it takes to clear sidewalks will now be almost cut in half. To you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, it's each route is eight hours. So right now, the one person wasn't starting their route until 
two or three hours in, they were doing the parking lots first. So they, um, so the second person can now start their route at 4 a.m. when they come in. And so they can have their route done by noon instead of by four o'clock as they're doing right now. So further to that, if I may, um, you, you mentioned a concern that uh, the snow plows might fill in the sidewalks if we were to do the sidewalks first. So the snow plow goes by, and then would the sidewalk clearer be scheduled like kind of behind it? Would that help with that? Like, or is that how it's done? I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just asking. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor and Councillor, we try to do that whenever we can. Uh, sometimes we, the timing doesn't work because the roads aren't on a set schedule as much. So we'll, we will go back and do it a second time if we need to. But you know, sometimes it might be clear, and then two hours later it's not clear because the plow went by. So and it's so it'll be a time period until we get back to clear it. Councillor Brown. Through you, Madam Mayor, and to the director, I guess, the um, do people have a number to call if there's a, an issue with their sidewalk being cleared? There's a subsequent question to that. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to the council, yes. On our website, we advertise a works phone number that is that they can call for any issues like that, any obstacles, snow piles, or any problems. Okay, so if I had a problem and I called that number subsequent, if I may, uh, what, what am I told? So if I'm phoning and saying, my sidewalk needs to be plowed, it's been three hours or four hours or whatever, maybe I don't have a complete understanding of how long it's going to take, what am I being told by the township in terms of how long it might take to get that done? Through you, Madam Mayor, the Councillor, it's, it's a tough question to say, it's, it's site specific. So hmm. they would be told that you know the sidewalk plow has been out since this time. Um, perhaps they'll have an idea how long it'll be, but they might not know exactly the length of time it'll be. But they could, they will tell you that the plows are out in full force and it'll be done this afternoon or this morning or more of a general time like that. I, they won't, we don't have GPSs in our sidewalk plows. Yeah. No, I understand. Okay, that's Just fine. further to that, I mean, uh, the residents are, are uh, responsible to have their sidewalk cleared themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you're, you're referring to sidewalk clearing routes, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Roots on the way to school or something like mm. that. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else? Oh, Councillor Kaiserbrink again. Mm -hmm. Okay. First. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. You're first, and then second time speaker. I don't want to jump the line. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you, just in regards to um, residents clearing their own um, their own part of sidewalk going ahead. I know in this community, it's an elderly community predominantly, and some people may not be able to do that. Um, Mr. Gibbons, in your um, in your presentation, you had uh, reference to the Snow Angel program. Um, to Director Coleman, what would it take to get something like the Snow Angel program to do a background to see if that's something that's doable in the township that's led by the township as opposed to a fringe group? Director, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, I, I like the model of the Innisfil program. It doesn't take a lot of staff time. It, we can set up on our, our website a platform where people can compliment other people for clearing their snow, and that I think the idea behind that is to encourage other people to help other people out. So that would be the minimal staff time for us, and I think that would be a good model. For this, you, Madam Mayor, um, I had the opportunity to hear Mr. Gibbons presentation in the uh, accessibility committee um, earlier this week and uh, as a result had some time to think about what he had said which is a very similar presentation. Um, I think your first point as far as recognition is that um, uh, it's easy to recognize that pedestrians are equal and we all have ability to move but I think it's important that we recognize you know, um, we have people that have to remove their own snow and may not be able to but also it it's daunting from a township perspective with two tractors and two people, but that we need to do all that we can for the people that, whether it's their kids or they're in a wheelchair trying to cross Queen Street um, to get the sidewalks cleaned up as fast as possible. On the recognition side, um, Director Coleman, I know we had stated about identifying the routes that are done first. Can you just explain what what those routes are. I know I have a map sitting in front of me as far as it comes off the Scugog Township site um, in regards to what's done and what's not done. But 
know, four plus schools in the, in the area plus a medical center, how do you determine which streets are done first? Through you, Madam Mayor, the Councilor, those maps show um, a route that is a priority route, and it's the downtown businesses, and it's, a, it's the main streets to school where the largest volumes of people walking are. Um, I don't have a full history on how the how which roads were chosen to be maintained by the municipality and which ones um, are not. I, I, I understand that it was a count, it was brought to council in the past, and the, the maps were approved by council at that time. And for the G, Madam Mayor, is that is that looked at? Well, I guess it hasn't been. But when would you look at that map again to update it or to reevaluate it to see if that's currently, you know? Uh, we call them heat maps, or where the mo majority of people are walking at given times of the day. Three, Madam Mayor, they haven't been updated in a while. I did see some report back in maybe 2010 where some sidewalks that were maintained by the municipality were taken off the list and the residents were asked to maintain instead. I think that was the last time it was updated. And just further, would we be looking at updating that now that it's brought to the attention of us now? Through you, Madam Mayor, the Councillor, now that we have an additional staff, or next winter we will have an, an additional staff member, we can evaluate, you know, how much we can do. Is there some areas that aren't being done now that are not fronting houses that should be done? Um, we, we can take a look at it at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to, uh, this is probably an opportune moment to say thank you to the uh, Public Works Department. I had a gentleman contact me in Nestleton who was clearing his own uh, corner, but he's on a corner between a municipal road and a uh, highway and uh, provincial highway. So both were, both plows were ending up on the corner and it looks similar to your picture, Mark. Giant mound, and he poor guy was trying to clear the whole thing without having a heart attack. And he finally just said, "Look, can I can I get some help here?" And I appreciate the uh, Skugog staff um, because they quickly figured out a way to uh, still clear the snow, but they did it in a different way so it didn't all end up in that one spot. And uh, he, I did call and follow up with him, and he said that the snow is very manageable, and he's able to keep that that corner clear because everyone uses that corner to get to the country store and and everything that's there. And that's an example of. Uh, the staff working together uh, with the public, as you said, uh, Mayor, because you know we all share that responsibility of, of keeping uh, roads clear. That wasn't a school route, it was just a regular route, uh, but he was greatly appreciative of that. And I just wanted to take this moment to say thank you um, for the work that was done. He was extremely happy with that, uh, with that care that was given to, to talk to the, the other plow folks and get that route uh, sorted out and get the route changed so that that wouldn't occur anymore. So thank you for that. Anything further? Councillor Quito? Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> Mark, that was like a master class on how to do a very quick presentation and get a lot of information in there, <laughs> so thank you. That was very well done. Um, I will have a question for you, but my first few questions are for Director Coleman. Um, the sidewalks that we have identified, um, through you, Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. the sidewalks that we've identified that the township will be maintaining, um, if, if they're not done for whatever reason within the 48 hours, is, does the responsibility then go on to the homeowner or the property owner to clear those sidewalks, or does it go back on the township to ensure that that 48 hours is met? Through you, Madam Mayor, the Councillor, the township would be still be responsible for clearing that sidewalk, not, okay. not the homeowner. Okay. So my next question then, in Mr. Gibbons' presentation, you mentioned something about OREG. Um, I don't know if you can quickly get to that slide. I'm not sure if I missed what you had said about that, um, that there's legislation that says that snow patrolling has to occur, or that? Yeah, there, there is a section about winter sidewalk patrol under um, the minimum maintenance standard for municipal oh, okay. highways. So, Director Coleman, is, is this what we follow um, as far as the regulations and are, I'm not familiar with the patrolling of the snow um, and the sidewalks, but is that something that we're adhering to or that, that we do? Through you, Madam Mayor, the Councillor, we do patrol the sidewalks. It's usually when there is, so we have to monitor the weather three times a day, and when there is a, a weather event, 
about to happen or happening, that's when we start our patrolling. And we look to see how much snow is on the sidewalk, is there ice on the sidewalk, and we determine what treatment we'll do based on that. We don't do regular patrolling like two weeks after a storm to see what's left. We, we only do it when the weather events happen. Thank you. Which, which is in accordance with the regulation. Okay. Further to that though, Madam Mayor, um, there have been many or several occasions this winter and not just with the large snow event, but just throughout the winter where there has been some infractions of snow removal, I guess is the best way to say it. Either it wasn't cleared it wasn't the uh, responsibility of the municipality, but regardless, the sidewalk was not cleared. There were barriers for people to cross. Um, I know uh, myself when I went for a walk the other day, there was a barrier trying to cross Queen Street or uh, Simcoe Street. Do we, as a municipality or a bylaw department, proactively after a large event? go and seek those opportunities to speak to the homeowners who have not cleared the snow if it's their responsibility and and to enforce the snow clearing before it gets to a point where um, we have parents posting pictures on social media asking for snow to be cleared and that particular snow event which is in Mr. Gibbon's presentation was in February it wasn't the last large one that we had it was February 20th or 24th um, so is there proactive measures that we as a municipality do I'm not sure which director would who's going to tackle that one Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor. You won the toss, did you, uh, Director Coleman? <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, bylaw mostly works on a complaint basis only. They, if someone says that there's a barrier, they will go out and address it, but they don't drive around looking for issues with snow piles. And I wouldn't necessarily want to encourage looking for issues, but when we have mobility issues and it's not just children trying to get to school and Councillor Watton some of us do send our kids on snow days um, <laughs> especially when there's like 10 or 11 of them in a season you want them out of the house um, but there's those with walkers there's wheelchairs there's well-being adults that are trying to walk as well that sometimes fall um, what are we doing to ensure that that the homeowners that are responsible for clearing the sidewalks or are plowing has not put any barriers up to anyone getting around the community. Director Coleman. Through you, Madam Mayor. We have done a public campaign throughout the winter. There have been 30 separate posts about various winter related issues. Um, the last storm in particular, we had a couple of posts directly about the sidewalk issues and that homeowners reminding them that they need to clear their sidewalks. Um, other than that, if people have any issues, if someone's not clearing their sidewalk, they can call bylaw and they will address it. Through you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, uh, as a municipality, we're not going to look for infractions. We're going to wait for the residents to identify an infraction, and the bylaw would then go out and address those with the homeowner? Through you, Madam Mayor, the Councillor. That is our current practice. Um, we have received several complaints that we have acted upon and uh, ensured that the sidewalks have been cleared in front of those residences to ensure safe passage. Thank you. I, I don't want to be the dead horse. I, <clears throat> I'm going to move on to my next point for now, if I, if I may, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam, um, I believe it was the mayor that had said it was a strike day that day, but I don't believe we coordinate our snow plowing with strike days. Like, because it was a strike day, we were lucky it was a strike day, mm -hmm. um, but there's no coordination between PA days or strike days or we plow, we plow. Is, is that correct? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor, yeah, we don't change our plans based on what type of day it is. We, Friday, unfortunately, we did, our, of our three staff, one was not available because they were dealing with some uh, personal issues, so they weren't, they couldn't come in that day. So we're actually one person down, and it was a very snow, heavy snowfall event, so it wasn't the best set of circumstances. 
My mm -hmm. purpose in saying it was a strike day was that there wouldn't be that many walkers, so it wasn't a huge issue, um, considering it was still snowing. So right, that, that and was that was, yes, was. I, and that was just high school that particular day yes, that was on yes, strike. Was. The, yeah. the elementaries that have to go to school that can't be left home alone when parents go to work still have to walk. Just My last, very last question, Madam Mayor. Um, did I understand correctly then with our new position, that means that we're going to have two in a plow and two doing sidewalks. Is that what I heard? Three, Madam Mayor, yep, that's, that is correct. So then hopefully we don't have another snow event between now mm -hmm. and next season. And then what will our residents who are on a route that's already cleared by uh, the municipality, what will they see as a difference then? Through you, Madam Mayor, it depends which route they're on. Uh, the first route, it shouldn't be any different because that person is already out first thing in the morning. The second route, they should see a snow plow several hours earlier than they do right now, a sidewalk plow. And then the ultimate goal as a township is to ensure safe passage for our residents to get to school if that's their destination or wherever they're going. Through you, Madam Mayor, safe passage on sidewalks, but also safe passage on road. There were some comments about that you can't, if there's a few inches of snow on the road, you can still drive. That's within the town, that's that's true, but in rural areas, especially where there's steep hills, we have residents that have called us with a couple inches of snow and said that they can't get out and get to, to work. Plus, we want to make sure our roads are passable for emergency vehicles as well. So safe passage for everybody is our goal. Thank you. Mr. McDougall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for your presentation, Mark. Um, I've been out on those sidewalks on some of those snowy days just because it's easier than firing up the truck uh, when it's cold and snowy. Um, quick question, I guess, for Director Coleman through you, Madam Mayor. So this year coming up with the new staff coming on, will we have two tractors or three tractors for plowing? Through you, Madam Mayor, we'll have two pickup trucks with plows for parking lots and two sidewalk plows for the sidewalks. So, through you, Madam Mayor, so the mornings will start with um, <clears throat> both pickup trucks and both plows heading out at the same time? Correct. So there won't be a competing interest where we have two pickup trucks plowing the Scugog Recreation Complex during the week when it's not heavily used and one plow <coughs> heading out, and then once the rec complex is cleared, I think. That's correct. Okay, so they'll, they'll both be. Um, just in terms of prioritization and, and the picking of routes, we don't have a history, if I remember correctly, that we don't, we're not exactly sure how these routes were determined, is that correct? Are you Madam Mayor? Well, Director Coleman wasn't here at the time, so. So will the, it's just a question for you, Director Coleman. Um, will the active transportation plan possibly inform the possible location of these routes in the future? Through you, Madam Mayor the Council, that's not part of the scope of the active transportation plan. I, I do know the like, generalities of the route. It was chosen as main streets in the business area and main roads where ch that children walk to school and also roads that don't front on residential property, so if it's a park property or something where there's nobody there to shovel it, and it's municipal property, that those are, we do those locations. Anything further? Um, just no. I'm just thinking in terms of um, I know we put our businesses first, and that makes sense in many ways. But the businesses generally open at 9 p.m. and school starts at 8:30 for most children, or sorry, 9 a.m. Thank you. Um, and the school starts at 8.30 in most cases, which means the children are on their way to school long before the businesses are ever open. So I don't know if it's possible to maybe prioritize some of the main arterial routes up, say, Queen Street, where nobody will shovel, or on 7A, but that might assist in the future if it's possible for one of the plows to head out on those routes. Through you, Madam Mayor, the Councillor, again, they, they start at the... Parks Depot, so it doesn't make sense to drive up Queen Street and not clear snow as I go. It will take longer to do their routes if they don't do it in an efficient manner. So that's that's part of the reason. Very good. Anything further? Councilor Keyes, a
Um, to Councillor Guido's uh, point with our new person, um, when we just have a relook at our 2010 um, route orientation and what have you, could could we potentially look at the possibility of our um, new person um, maybe having a, a bit of a walkabout as well, like if the plowing is addressed and so on, just to kind of do a bit of a follow-up to, to uh, maybe do a little bit of proact proactive poking with some of the barrier locations? Is that something that could potentially be a part of their role, or is there simply too, or is their entire day already gone with plowing as it is? I, I'm not sure about the range of the scope of, of their work, so it's just a question. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor, I think on a heavy snow day, they would be involved with snow removal the whole day. There wouldn't be time for that. They will be on other days, like parking lots and sidewalks are salted fairly frequently because you get freeze thaw and ice build up even when there is no snow or you get a light snow and you need to salt. So they'll be doing that, but are they, they're, when they're not in person, there may be some capacity to look at other roads. I don't want to promise that until that person's in place and we see how it works. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Um, just a, a couple of things. Um, gone are the days where students would, uh, kids would go around with shovels and see if they could make five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks doing your, your driveway for it. I would love to pay a kid to do my driveway for me. But you know, um, perhaps we could reach out to the high school and um, s suggest that kids could do that for their, for their hours. Um, there's some kids who are in grade uh, 12 right now that are probably scrambling for some hours. Good, strong kids could do your, uh, could do your, your driveway and your sidewalk. Um, the day of the, the major snowstorm there a week and a half ago, um, we couldn't get all of the Scugog Rec Center parking lot done, right? Is that, is that correct? And uh, were there complaints about that? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. So because we only had two staff that day and we knew the, this request was coming for additional priorities on sidewalk, we tried to just clear a small area at the Scugog Recreation Center and get the second person in a sidewalk tractor sooner. It resulted in a lot of complaints because, first of all, the, the, the facility is fairly busy during the day. And then there was a, um, a tournament on that night, I, I was told, and then there was concern that it wouldn't be able to be cleared before that before the park lot filled up. And it does get much more difficult and a lot of safety issues with clearing once there's a lot of vehicles once there. there's cars there, yeah. I, I drove through it myself at lunch and someone had driven right over a curb in the parking lot because I couldn't see where the curb was. And did we receive a lot of complaints about sidewalks not being cleared? I, myself, I don't believe I received any okay. not during that storm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Your Worship. We asked a lot of questions of staff. We didn't ask a lot of questions of you. I, I think I laid it all out. So you did good. lay it all out, so thank you very much. And, sorry, I need a motion now to receive the delegation. Thank you, Councillor Kieserbrink, Councillor Ross, all those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Do you need something? Um, I'm, I'm going to stand in for the next presentation as, as um, if, if I may, uh, okay. anymore, so if that's in order. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jocelyn Fenton. Uh, Correct. She is not here. Unfortunately, she's um, uh, one of her children is ill and, and uh, couldn't make it tonight. Um, so I offered to go through her slide deck on her behalf. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. That's Sorry right. to hear that uh, her child is ill. So unfortunately, I, I won't be able to do any of her presentation justice as it was a very personal uh, presentation to her circumstances, but um, um, Director Coleman and uh, Councillor um, Ross had the opportunity to hear a presentation at the uh, School Accessibility Advisory Committee. Um, I forget when that was. So uh, I'll just quickly go through the deck and uh, just leave that with you for, for consideration uh, when, we, when we think about sidewalks in our township. So um, Ms. Fenton is a mother of three boys, two of which have uh, degenerative uh, uh, muscular disease, uh, shine muscular dystrophy, and are bound to uh, quite large and heavy power chairs. And um, 
it, it is an ongoing challenge for them to get around the township at best of times with the state of certain one, certain sidewalks, particularly Water Street, um, but is exacerbated in these winter conditions as they cannot mount, um, you know, these windows to reach sidewalks. And it, it creates a, a very difficult situation, not only to get around as, as to roll around as, as pedestrians in the pedestrian realm, but also um, coming in out of vehicles. Uh, and there's a few pictures of that. Um, so this may not seem like a big deal to you and I, but um, for, for these boys and, and their caregiver, their mother, it is quite a debil debil debilitating challenge. And I do have a video here, which doesn't look super high quality on here, but on just that okay. little bit of snow. Brayden, um, back up. Back up, honey. Now stay to the right. Stay to the right. The right, where Cameron is. Go forward, bud. You're okay. No. Are you recording Yes, I am. So just a very, you know, just a very small example of, of the day-to-day -day ordeal um, that, that this family faces. Uh, some more pictures um, that, that really restrict their mobility in wintertime. And, and uh, you know, Jocelyn said to me, we, we practically don't go out in the winter in this township because it's, it's very, very challenging for us. Um, here are some pictures. Now, this is private property, and I guess it's an open question uh, to council as to what, um, if any, say or intervention can the township have with, with a situation like this. And I, heard, I realize it's a little hard to make out, but we have a, an accessible parking uh, space at a, a private um, strip plaza that, that's completely obstructed. Um, other situations, you know, the boys with the ramps are, are faced with situations like these where they're, they're unable, this is at the medical center, where they're unable to get in to load. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm leaving that as an open question. Um, you know, just the daily struggle of people parking in, in, in you know, designated places, um, making it difficult for their, um, you know, for them to get around said SA Cocker, the transport truck is blocking three uh, three accessible parkings here. Some somebody's done the same, and just a total lack of consideration to uh, you know to a, a vulnerable segment of our <clears throat> excuse me of our population. Um, again, and I don't know if this is something that the the council or accessibility committee could engage in to to sort of educate um, private businesses to uh, as you can see here these shopping carts are really blocking uh, the way for for somebody to get into a wheelchair or or gardens or that sort of thing. That, and these are kind of the, the daily struggles, and it's not unique to Scugog, of course, but these are the sort of daily struggles that people with accessibility needs have um, have to face. This is outside our community, but uh, just to give an example of of um, the struggle that. Uh, that they face and, and, and leaving it open, obviously some, some infrastructure work that we need to do here in, 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 on municipal, but also on the, on the private realm. Uh, what can we do to, um, to improve life um, for our <laughs> residents and uh, leaving it out on a positive slide uh, with the boys. So thank you and I appreciate uh, you yielding Jocelyn's time so I could go through her deck for her. Thank you very much for uh, presenting for her. Any questions, Councillor Ross? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to comment. I had the opportunity to listen, as Mr. Gibbon said, to the uh, presentation from Jocelyn during the Accessibility Committee. It was quite moving, and she's very passionate about her boys, as is any mom. But um, to see these pictures and the stories behind them, um, there's a lot of empathy that you can feel for something like that. And I think the presentation is not a slight on, on business owners or the township or anything, but it is an education to council to staff and to the public on what the actual hurdles and obstacles there are just in a daily thing of going to a medical center to get a checkup or to get you know a carton of milk um i know as a police officer those are my favorite tickets to give out where you know ignorant people who park in handicap zones or in you know a simple ramp like that because they have to run in and grab something but i think to take this away is um we can be grateful for what we have and we can see something like this and it's a story that hits home for our community that we need to do better not as a township but at each individual to educate people around us as to uh, the difficulties that are out there thank you and uh, i'm really glad that this presentation was made at the accessibility committee because this is something that maybe they could uh, have some input on so thank you um Mark, I'm wondering, did you see the, um, and this is away from snow, 
but uh, you did talk about the, the state of our sidewalks. Did you see the map of all of the sidewalks that are going to be looked after this year? Um, uh, yes, Your Worship, I did have a look at it, so it's uh, encouraging to see some progress it's, being made on that front. a lot but, of work being uh, done. We've got a lot to catch up on. I, I think there's a huge deficit in, well, in the pedestrian We've been working hard on it the last few years, and we're going to be working extra hard this year. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Okay, is any other questions? Seeing none, thank Councillor McDougall. <laughs> thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for that presentation, Mark. And that was... Uh, that was heartwarming seeing the children, you know, trying to move around town, and it makes me think of um, the meeting we had with Lindsay Park talking about transit and accessibility and transit issues, and we were talking about the number of people that will be uh, in need of mobility type situations, and and you know, you think in the community where we have a large center of um, dare I say seniors, kind of at the uh, Reach Street and Simcoe Street area, who will transit to downtown frequently. And I know, um, you know, the business owners are trying their best to, to you know, put, put in ambulatory washrooms, et cetera, where they can and make their businesses accessible. Because they see people coming with one of a party of four, say, who has accessibility issues. And by limiting that one, it will limit their business totally. So um, thank you for the presentation. And I, and I think it's it would be good for the accessibility committee to keep a lens on this. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, motion, please, to receive the uh, presentation. Councillor Watt and Councillor Brown. All those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, report 11.1. Um, <clears throat> the um, zoning bylaw amendment application or Port Perry Veterinary Services. And Councillor McDougall has, um, has a conflict of interest on this one. And it's on, oh, what page is that on? Mr. Clerk, you didn't put it's the page seven. numbers on. Yes, seven. <laughs> yeah, seven. seven. I'm just teasing uh, the clerk because his assistant is away today. So on page seven, recommendation is there. Could I have a mover, please? Councillor Watton, Councillor Guido, questions or comments? Councillor Guido? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just do have one question on 1.2 on page 8 of our council agenda. Um, it just says the purpose of the proposed amendment is to rezone the subject lands from neighborhood commercial exception 5 uh, zone to neighborhood commercial exception 6 to permit a business professional or administrative office and a veterinarian clinic. So my question is, and I wish this veterinarian clinic all the best of luck and success, and I hope this never happens, that they're going to sell their business or move on somewhere else. But let's say they do. Would the new owners, if they are looking to operate a business professional or administrative office or vet cl clinic, need to come back for um, uh, a special rezoning again? Or would this classify that they can run one of those out of that office? Please. Through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Guido. Um, in the bylaw itself, we only included business professional and administrative office as the use because they're only using the building for office purposes. As mentioned, they're not bringing animals to there. So we did not include the vet clinic as a specific use in the bylaw. If they should choose to sell the property, anyone could, could maintain it for the office use. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any other questions on this? I have, a, I have a mover and a seconder, Watton and Guido, and there's a, a, just a typo on, pay, on item number, recommendation three. It's attachment two, not three. Okay? So uh, any other questions or comments? Councilor Kieserbrink? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just um, from the public meeting that was held, what, did any, uh, any comments come forward or any further things get addressed after that? There was nothing that was submitted in writing. There was two people that spoke at the public meeting and they were both in support of the application. Great, thank you. All those in favor? That's carried, thank you. Um, and 11.2, and Councillor McDougall has a pecuniary interest on this one. This is Willow Tree. And uh, that is on page 18, page 18. I have a mover, please. Councillor Guido, seconder. Councillor Ross, 
Questions or comments? Councilor Guido? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do have a question. I'm sorry. I thought maybe I'd have a bit of time to get it. There's a presentation, but that's okay. I will quickly scroll to where I'd highlighted my question. Um, 2.1.4, which is section 22 or page 22. Um, I guess it's more of a broad or general question. From what I've understood from this report is that it is in line with the uh, provincial policy to have diversified on-farm usage. So if this, this is something that the province recognizes, why are applicants coming to the township for these exemptions? Is it because our bylaws or our official plan or policy has not caught up yet? Well, like why are, why are we having to do this? Sure. Through Go you, ahead. Madam Mayor. Um, so the province did release in response to the last Greenbelt plan review, they did release guidelines for permitted uses in the agricultural area. This was to help um, supplement the policies in the Greenbelt plan to provide a variety of uses in the agricultural area, recognizing, recognizing some of the agricultural related and on-farm diversified uses. Um, there is, it is a wide range and um, we're learning it continues to evolve. Like 10 years ago, we didn't know half of these uses would exist in the agricultural area. So it was a way to provide flexibility for farmers to provide some guidance um, while maintaining and protecting the, the main use being agricultural. Um, our zoning bylaw and official plan do have to be updated to reflect some of these documents, which will increase some of the uses in the agricultural area. But we also would like to continue to have some sort of zoning bylaw review for specific types of uses, um, just because it is very site specific each case, and you do have to review them against the guidelines. But it is something we will re we will review as part of our next official plan review and zoning bylaw review. Uh, on a whole, what we can do, and then we will look at the uses that would still need those further approvals. And thank you, um, three, Madam Mayor. And when will that review be occurring? So the official plan review would follow the region's municipal comprehensive review that they're working on now. Um, they're targeting 2022, I believe, for a new official plan, and ours would follow shortly after with a review. So any future farms that are looking to do um, a similar diversified use have to go through the same process regardless of the fact that the province has recognized um, in the interim yes okay. um, it is something where the regions looking at as part of their process in terms of what do they have to do at that level to and um, facilitate some of these uses if anything um, and then we would take a look at it on a comprehensive level what could be done and then we would have to kind of set aside those uses that would still need that further review. Further? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just had to find the next one. Um, on page 25 of our council agenda, um, under the comments from the Planning and Economic Development Department, um, it says proposed zoning bylaw should exclude ability to create large scale reoccurring uses such as banquet facilities. So would this be similar to having a wedding venue? Is that where it's is is that what it speaks to? Essentially, yes. Um, because the application didn't come in with the banquet facilities, it wasn't something we were adding at this time. Um, that is one of those things that isn't clearly outlined in the guidelines. And I was actually at a workshop on Friday that they are, the province is looking at those types of facilities in the rural agricultural areas because it is a growing industry. Um, but that is one of the that is one of the uses that we would most likely require a site specific process to deal with any issues that come from those types of facilities. Thank you. If I may further, mm -hmm. so if this is comments from the region of Durham, am I understanding it correctly that they would not they don't support that in any uh, municipality? No, and I wouldn't take it that way. Um, it was more just with respect to this application, it wasn't reviewed for that type of use. Okay. So the permission shouldn't be included as an outright permitted use in the bylaw. It was more if they wanted to do that, they should identify it and we should look at the specifics that go with that type of use through an application. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? C Councillor Brown? Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, Ms. Prentice, on page 28, uh, it says uh, Ag 18 allows for agritourism uses which 
uh, may include a licensed restaurant. Can you just speak to the possibility of that? And uh, sure. would there be even be a timeline on that, something like that? So this was intended to, and the, the verbiage used, restaurant and liquor licensed premises, are two definitions we have in our current zoning bylaw. It was intended to recognize the small cafe that they currently have on the site with respect, to, but we don't, a restaurant is the same thing as a cafe to us. It's just a term of size. Um, the liquor license premises was to address, they were also looking at cider, cidery and winery, not necessarily a winery, but a cidery, um, and how that is licensed through the LCBO, that would, we would look at that, that component through that definition in our bylaw. Okay, and just one more if I may. Mm -hmm. um, on page 30 of the map there, can there be an entrance for Willow Tree off line six? Is that a possibility? So there would be two entrances? One they off, 21, off, one off of the north end there. They yes. do have frontage on line six on this property. They would have to request an access approval through the township. Oh. You do? You have a, a farm entrance. Okay, so it, but it would be deemed a farm entrance at this point in time. Okay, so if so, I mean, if, so something would have to change in order for if you you're to have a driveway at, yeah. that you you could enter your facility from the other side, right? If it was to be used for anything other than the farm purposes specifically, we would have to look at that and we would address that potentially through site plan approval if they were proposing that. I don't think there's any plans to propose. No, they're just maintaining it as the agricultural. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any further questions? Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Any, anything you would like to add? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. 11.3 uh, zoning bylaw amendment on Church Street um, by the Grahams, and that's on page 31. Recommendation is there. Could I have a mover, please? Councillor Guido, Councillor McDougall. Questions or comments? No questions or comments? Uh, all those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you very much. Correspondence 12.1. Um, um, Councillor Watton, you hold this to uh, be on the agenda. And it has to do with um, tourism ori oriented destination signage fee increases. Todd signs for uh, tourism. Councillor Watton, do you want to address this? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just really wanted it to put on onto the agenda so that um, hopefully this council will endorse um, the County of Halliburton stand and also have it referred to the Tourism Committee for their comments. Um, it is a huge increase in price and as a tourist destination and if we're inclined to want to put up any other Todd signs, um, it could impact us. So I just felt that it was important to put Seconder. it on. Councilor McDougall? Yes. Anything else, Councilor Watton? No, okay. thank you. Councilor McDougall? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm not exactly sure who to direct the question to. The Todd signs, are these the Todd, the signs that would be, say, on the 401 that would direct you, say, yes. to Brimacombe? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or would this also apply to signs that would be along the M any MTO corridor in terms of advertising? Or no? Which corridor are you talking about? Like if there was a sign a, a adjacent to Highway 12, say, that was advertising, do these signs apply to that if it's regarding tourism? Yeah, on Highway or 12, yeah, they're, they're Todd signs too, are they not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? All those in support of the motion. And that's carried. Thank you. And uh, I pulled this one and um, had a motion all lined up and uh, Councillor Kiesebrink also had an interest in this and uh, we merged the two uh, motions and so I'll ask you Councillor Kiesebrink to um, make your comments on your motion. Thank you Mayor Drew. Um, having uh, spoken with, uh, you're going to have to help me, Mark. Mark Mahowski. My house key. My house key. I never My can say his key. name right. My house key. Uh, the C C CEO of um, Kawartha Conservation Authority. Um, we're greatly privileged to have the support um, of the Kawartha Conservation Authority with the many different applications that are submitted to have their expertise. Also with our Healthy Lakes endeavors and waterfront initiatives. And uh, over the years, we've benefited greatly from 
a wonderful relationship with our conservation authority. Um, in at the timing, at this time, the province is uh, really doing an, a comprehensive review of con conservation authorities and their role. And so this motion um, is, I'll just read it. Whereas the township of Scugog has been well served by the Kawartha, Lake Simcoe, and Central Lake Ontario Conservation Authorities, and whereas the township of Scugog is committed to planning for a sustainable future for its resources and environment, and whereas the township of Scugog relies on the efforts of the conservation authorities, one, to monitor floods, manage source water protection, protect Lake Scugog, ensure the integrity of the watersheds within our municipality, and to conserve our natural environment, and two, in the protection of our residents from natural events, the critical support for building sustainable communities, and in integrity and ensuring the integrity of Lake Scugog and the watersheds that we depend on as a community. And whereas the provincial government is reviewing mandated programs and services and potential funding to conservation authorities, and whereas smaller municipalities do not have the capacity or the financial resources to employ staff with the technical expertise that conservation authorities provide, and whereas conservation authorities will be important partners in securing sustainable communities for future generations and adapting to changing environmental pressures and a changing climate, and whereas conservation authorities will be important partners in, cre in con concrete and cost-effective initiatives to address climate change. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Scugog requests that the provincial government improve their funding of conservation authorities to provide a more stable funding base that will prevent any downloading of costs to municipalities, and that the provincial government maintain and not diminish the core mandate of conservation authorities and to continue to support the principle of planning on a watershed basis in the ongoing review and prioritize the allocation of adequate funding to support the core mandate of conservation authorities, and that this resolution be forwarded to the Premier, the Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks, the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, all Durham Region MPPs, all Township of Scugog Conservation Authorities, Durham Region Municipalities, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario and Conservation Ontario. Thank you. Seconder. Councillor Ross. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you very much. New business? None. No, no closed session. Motion to adjourn, please. Councillor Guido. Councillor Ross. <laughs> All those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.